Well, good evening, all my social media followers. Thanks for tuning in. This is going to be a fun little education, if you will, on interest rates. And so Santa Claus, we all know, is coming to town, right? And he's probably bringing some higher interest rates with him. That's what's probably going to happen in the next year. But it's not going to happen right away, and it's not going to be a lot. So bear with me because I'm kind of a nerd, so I'm going to go through a bunch of charts and stuff that most people are like, oh my gosh, what is this clown doing? Lots of people say that anyways. Whatever. I'm a nerd about this stuff, but also means I'm an expert about it. So if you will, here we go. So this is a fun little graph that I have here. This shows historical interest rates starting in 18, sorry, 1798. Do you know what they were? Pop quiz, anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller. Yeah, they were 8.1%. That's pretty high, right? And then they dipped and got down here to about, oh, this is about the 3% range right here. That little spike here in 1869. I don't know what happened then, but they spiked pretty good. And they kind of stayed here down in the six. And then they went back up to about seven here in 19, oh, it's probably the Great Depression, 1929. And then they dipped in the 40s and 50s probably because of World War II, they were selling lots of mortgages to fund the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the war, right? And then they spiked. Whoever, uh, you, you know, was around during the 80s with that runaway inflation that they had. And so the federal government just kept raising the rates and raising the rates and raising the rates and raising the rates. And anybody know what the maximum interest rate that we got to was on mortgages? 15.8. That's a high interest rate. Could you imagine? I know lots of people that I've sold homes to that, are, that were like, you should have bought when we were young. It was 18%, 15%. It was just bonkers. And then it just down, 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 down to the lowest that it's ever been. And that was August of 2020. Interest rates dipped all the way down to a half percent. That's And this is the 10-year treasury yield. So this isn't actually mortgage rates. But mortgage rates follow this, very much so. And actually higher than this. This is actually just interest rates. So here's what's going to happen. Inflation's getting out of control a little bit. Like 5, was it 5.1, 5.3, 5.7 percent? Depends on which one you look at, right? And so they're going to try and slow that down. One of the ways they slow that down is raising that interest rate. So right now you're able to pull down somewhere around a 3 three-ish, two, two, eight, three, three, one, somewhere right around in there, right? Um, three, one, two, five, real close to three anyways. And so they're going to raise it a little bit, but it's not going to be a lot. So the, the predictions are by the end of the year, we're going to be seeing three and a half, 3.8. So not a bad rate, still better than the average. I, I can't remember the exact statistic. I should have wrote it down because I don't hold on to those numbers like I used to. Anyways, the, the the average for all time interest rate is over 6%. So if you're in the threes, you're still way better. When I started in the business, they were like eight and they went to seven. We were like, oh, and then they went to six. We're like, oh my gosh, they went to five and then four. And then, you know, they bounced around there for a little while and then they dipped to three and it's like, oh my gosh, that's cheap money, right? So right now, let's look at this chart here because this one's kind of fun. This shows the one-year interest rate. So this is January of 2021, um, all the way back here. And it shows that was the low. And then they actually went up to quite a bit higher in April. They spiked a little bit. And then they trickled back down, trickled back down. And remember that graph, it showed the lowest was in August. Here's August. Here's where they, where they are now. So again, not that much. So pre-pandemic, pop quiz, does anybody know what the rates were pre-pandemic? That was like too long, painful, awful years ago, right? So who's who remembers that, right? It's okay. I have it for you. They were 4% before the pandemic hit. And we thought that was great because that was super good. That's an amazing interest rate, tons of buying power. So by the end of the year, they might be three and a half, 3.6. So it's still better than pre-pandemic. It just feels awful because they've been so low. So people are panicking a little bit. And I get—I I kid you not, the question I get the most now is, what's going to happen with interest rates? Second question, what's going to happen with the market? We're going to get to that in a second. But let's talk more about interest rates because I think there's more to learn here. So here's the historic trends, not as far back as 1798. 
Um, this is starting in 1963. So, and this is actual actual mortgage rates, not just interest rates. So, anyways, six percent. Then they went up to nine percent. That was in 1969. And then they went up again. They hit 9% for most of the early 70s. And then late 70s, that's when they spiked up to that 15%. And then they've trickled down, trickled down, trickled down, trickled down. So again, if they go up, it feels so bad, right? Because they were so low that it's like, oh my gosh, this. I mean, my friend has a 2.1 and I'm paying four. Gosh, guys, four is really still a great rate. And we're not even gonna get to four within this year. I, I can't guarantee you that. I don't have a crystal ball but I've nerded out. I've read tons of articles. I follow this all the time and it, it's, it's not going to go up substantially. It's not going to go up all at once. It's going to be a little bump and then a little bump and a little bump. And they're going to govern that because as soon as um, the new variant came out, they said, we're going to pause. We're not going to raise it. But now they're seeing inflation saying, okay, we've got to raise this a little bit to, to slow the inflation down. Is it going to cause the market to crash? I get that. That's the next question after I talk about interest rates. Is the market going to crash because of this? No, definitely not going to crash. Those things that were in play in 08, 09, the bad mortgage practices, the subprime lending, none of that stuff is in play right now. It's it's just not happening. We're not seeing everyone thought there's going to be this wave of foreclosures. I still think there's going to be some. Um, but But what's happened is people don't need to get foreclosed on because values have gone up so much that even if they're in trouble and behind, they can usually sell it for more than they owe. So I give it back to the bank, make the money, move on. Um, so it, there's really, it's quite a fascinating um, it, dynamic that's going on there. But anyways, so interest rates, right, they got as high as you know, 15, 16% and they're still great. I mean, if you were to draw a line through here, even if they were still way better than the average of the last, you know, four decades anyways, five decades. And then this graph, uh, what's this one show? Oh, this shows just uh, the 30 year um, for, for this year. And they're starting in July. So it got here, August, it dipped to that low. And then it went up a little more down and then up. And this is just a little bit more of a condensed version. So all that said to say rates, yes, they're going to go up. Yes, it's going to hurt your buying power a smidge. Um, so still better to buy now before they go up higher. But it will also curb that steep increase in value that we're seeing a little. But here's the problem. The 0809 bust happened, right? And most of the builders scaled their building. A lot of them stopped building or went out of business and they've never got back to pre-0809 levels. So because of that, there's this shortage of inventory. It's over 5 million units short and that that's residential rental units and housing units. So it's not just houses were short, it's, it's, it's apartments. Because if you're looking for a rental, how's that working for you, right? It's like trying to find toilet paper in, you, you know, last uh, early to 2020. Um, it, it's tough. There, it's hard to find a rental. And then, and then there's 16 people that want the same rental. It, it's crazy. And that's not just here in Carbon County. It's, it's everywhere, uh, everywhere nationwide. And so, what was I saying? Sorry, lost my train of thought. Oh, housing unit short, right. So we're half a million units short of what the population growth has been. And now with this, the cost of materials going up and supply chain issues causing the availability of materials to go down, I think it's gonna accentuate this problem and gonna it's just going to fast forward and, and the, the consequences of this further down the line because there's just not the inventory to fill that void. I, I mean, literally, Two years ago, there was hundreds of homes for sale in Carbon County. Let me tell you what there was for over the last, so last week in Carbon County, 25 homes for sale. The week before that, 26. The week before that, 26. The week before that, 30. The week before that, 28. It's kind of been hovering. So during that time frame, you know, there's been, there were seven listings, 15 under contract, four sold, 14 listings, um, no, sorry, uh, six new listings, 14 under contracts, 14 solds, 
four new listings, 11 under contracts, eight solds, seven new listings, 10 under contracts, 12 solds. So there's always more under contracts than you see as sold because a lot of them fall out of escrow for various reasons, inspections, buyers think they're qualified, they're not, lots of different things, something pops up on the title, the probate wasn't done, lots of things happen that cause a deal to fall through. Um, so, so, so you'll see lots of more properties go under contract than you'll see actually sales. But what's been happening over the last mm, six months anyways, 10 listings, about 10 solds, 10 listings, 10 solds, 10 listings, 10 solds. And it's just been jockeying and we've been keeping about 18 to 30, 35 homes on the market which is not enough. If you've been looking, you know, it's the inventory is tight. You're fighting for a home. Usually if you make an offer, do you get the first one? No. Do you get the second one? Sometimes third one, maybe fourth one. Eh, you get a little closer by then. And uh, it's, it's crazy to, to think that that's what you've got to do to get a home. Cause literally five years ago, my gosh, we were begging people to buy homes and you'd make an offer for 15,000 less than list price. And the so like, thank you. You know, and now it's like the, you offer 5,000 above and the seller's like, that's it? I thought I'd get 20 more. That's what my neighbor got. We aren't seeing as many multiple offers. It's slowing down a little bit. Not a ton. It's just slowing down a little bit. So what's, what is going to happen that it, that's going to help? What's up, Carrie and Jandy and Paula, by the way? Thanks for watching. What, what is going to happen is as rates go up, it's going to slow the market a little bit. It's going to slow that, that increase that we were seeing. It's also going to slow the refinances down. So getting a mortgage to buy a home is going to be quicker, going to be easier. We're not going to see as many people going and getting the refinance for the lower interest rate, which is you know not as great for the banks, but also very great for the consumer buying a home because they're going to get a little bit quicker processing. Um, let's see, what else do I want to cover with you guys tonight? Emory County, by the way, is the same. Um, there's been between 12 and 13 listings consistently for the last several months. List, you know, we might get up to 15, then we're down to 11, then to 12, but it's been, you know, 12, 13 on average any day of the week that you do a search. So the market continues to be strong. It hasn't even slowed down this winter. We've got buyers coming to town tomorrow, three days before Christmas. It's bonkers. And anyways, Interest rates are great, guys. If you're going to buy, sooner is better than later because the buying power that you have at, you know, three, three and a half is way better than you'll have at four and five, which I'm not saying it's going to get to four to five. It, it, I do not believe that's going to happen even by the end of 2023 or 2024. Oh, excuse me. So with that said... I think that's what I wanted to cover about interest rates that historically, on average, they've been way higher than we than we are now. So while it's going to feel painful for someone that knows their neighbors pulled in a two, two and a half, and you're at a three and a half, that's still a fantastic rate, especially with inflation at 5%. Basically, that's free money you've got that mortgage with. Because you, you, if inflation's in your, the value of your dollars, you know, you know, diving as, as inflation goes up, but your payment still stays stationary, you're buying. So I don't know how to explain that any better. Um, remember when you could buy a loaf of bread for 69 cents? Now it costs you, you know, over a dollar. Same thing with your mortgage. So like your first, like me and my wife's first mortgage was 420 some dollars a month. We were stressed. Looking back, wouldn't you love a $400 mortgage, right? That's just it, the value of money has gone down. So your you, $100 doesn't seem like as much as it used to seem like, right? So that said, Merry Christmas to you guys. Oh, so check this out. We had a, a fundraiser. We do this every year. You guys probably don't know that because we never really talk about it as realtors. We really should. Every year at Christmas, we have our board luncheon. We get together and have a lunch together. All of us competitors put down our competition, get together, and we do an auction. And it's a dessert auction. And some of these desserts are delicious and they're expensive. I usually pay for this $200 gluten-free pie and worth it. 100% worth it. But someone had these cookies custom made. Check this out. They're Realtor R cookies. And after they got bid up to like $75 for a bag of these, I asked for one because I thought it's just super cool. I'd never seen a Realtor cookie and I can't eat it because it's got gluten. So I'm going to keep it forever. But Realtor R cookie, shout out to Casey Wilson. Thanks for sharing the cookie. Super cool. And so anyways, we raised the money and it goes to a charity. We've done the food bank. We've done Realtor members that have had a tough time, um, had a, a child that was sick or needed help with something or another. And uh, we've really, uh, we do great with that. It's amazing how generous 
Carbon County people are. Like we raise close to $2,000 every year. Um, hopefully next year we'll go over that. Super cool stuff and we love doing that. It's fun. It's great to help and give back after the community that supports us. And on that note, Thanks for that support. Thank you. By the way, if you haven't liked our page and followed our page, make sure you do that. This is where you're going to get all these updates and me nerding out with all these interest rates and watch, uh, reading these graphs and interpreting the data because anybody can do a Google search, but it takes a little bit of understanding to be able to interpret that. So that said, have a great night. Merry Christmas. Stay warm. Stay safe. We're supposed to get a bunch of snow. Make sure you like our page, follow our page, stay tuned because this is where we post our new listings first. This is where I give you the market updates, the interest rate updates, um, and, and we'll keep our pulse on it because COVID could change things. If the economy starts to go down, that would uh, change inflation, so maybe they wouldn't bring the rates up because they don't want to hamper the economy with the interest rates going up. So there's just lots of, lots of different things that play in this a whole, whole lot. So anyways, have a great night. Thank you guys again for watching.